Hello and welcome to North 100, a Canadian Highlander podcast. I'm Serge, joined today by Nelson. Hey, I'm here. And Wheeler. Thank you for having me, Serge. It's great to be here. Oh, our pleasure, Wheeler. A reminder that everything that we do is brought to you by you, with your support of the Patreon over at patreon.com slash loading ready run. Welcome to our set review of The Lord of the Rings. There's a bunch of other lines behind it. We'll just go with the shorter version. Tales of Middle Earth. Anything else? Universes Beyond. <laughs> brought to you by <laughs> Richard Garfield <laughs> and J.R.R. Tolkien. Now, a reminder of the way our set reviews work, it is not comprehensive. We are analyzing all these cards through the lens of Canadian Highlander. We're going to eventually cover the Commander cards. Today, our goal is Wooburg. Part 2 is going to be Gold, Artifact, Lands, and all of the spicy Commander cards, because there's some pretty interesting ones there. And a we're actually going to start a little bit differently today. A really important mechanic of this set is the One Ring, or rather the mechanic is called The Ring Tempts You. And so just really quickly, if you're not sure how it works... The ring, the one ring, is an emblem that you get. And every time the ring tempts you, you get to add one additional ability that you permanently get forever. You also get to assign a ring bearer. The ring bearer wields all those powers. An emblem, like a planeswalker emblem, can't be destroyed, can't be taken away from you unless you die. And I think with that, we could lead to the first card, Boromir. Oh, well, we should probably talk about what the ring oh, actually does. Oh, you if want you to don't... read the whole thing? Just the abilities, right? The abilities yeah. are pretty important. Right. All right. So the first ability, the ring can tempt you even if you don't. Oops, actually, James, can you flip it over? Your ring bearer is legendary and can't be blocked by creatures of greater power. The next ability is whenever the ring bearer attacks, draw a card and then discard a card. Whenever your ring bearer becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller sacrifices it at the end of combat. And whenever your ring bearer deals combat damage to a player, each opponent loses three life. So all pretty strong abilities. <clears throat> yep, pretty reasonable. Yeah, it's not the initiative. It's yeah. so I don't uh, hate it. I thought I thought I was going to get to say that first. It's Sorry. okay. It's all right. It's all upside. Yes, which is yeah. kind of nice. Much yeah. yeah, like you know, that's an accurate lore representation of the ring, right? All upside. <laughs> nothing. Like nothing no. bad happens to anyone that touches the ring. You know what? Yeah, it's involved with the ring. What yeah. could possibly go wrong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, shall we jump on into it, Wheeler? Sure. Speaking of someone where nothing goes wrong, it's Boromir, Warden of the Tower. Two and a white for a 3-3 legendary creature, human soldier with vigilance. And whenever an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. And sacrifice Boromir. Creatures you control gain instructable until end of turn. The ring tempts you. Wow. It's a good card. A nice card. Yeah. I'm not going to say that a lot this set. Um, wow, what, yeah. a, what a prelude to I'm this whole setting, episode. I'm not going to be negative, but yeah. I am setting like some standards here, which, oddly enough, the set isn't going into standard. That's a whole different thing. Um, so it has Ancient 2 mana. I got a bug in my hand. Uh, <laughs> which is appealing, because Death and Taxes, yeah. or Green White, uh, or Green White X, kind of legends -y stuff. It's easy to cast this card. 3-3 three, three is a reasonable body, and that's a reasonable ability, especially if you are looking to get ahead of other decks and looking to prevent them from having any kind of mox draw shenanigans or, you know, just saving your Keister versus Storm or Dreadhorde Arcanist. I mean, not, it, all the elemental invocations. Yep. Right? Like, that's not nothing. Yeah, Cascade. It's, it's any spell, not non-creature, which is something that, you would imagine it would be non-creature because, you know, it's a white creature hating on free stuff. And you can also just save your entire team. And not only that, you can save your entire team and also make one of your creatures potentially a bit better. There's some interesting implications with the ring tempts you, especially when it comes to like one shot abilities like yeah. this, Yeah. Uh, which some of them are like, oh, I can Caracas my own creature now. Others are, oh, they can Caracas my creature now. <laughs> but I think Boromir has enough good going on that you'll want to play it as kind of a redundant selfless spirit that has two relevant creature types. Good card. Great. I do want to talk more about the ring tempts you with that one too. I mean, I think it is important to note we're not going all in on it, right? Like every single the ring tempts you card is sort of an incidental upside, or as you mentioned, downside because of Krakus. Well, it's just always it's very creature focused, which is good. It 
requires you to continually be tempted by the ring, which is good. Good in the sense that it isn't the initiative. Um, <laughs> and I mean, so, like, there are some cards that will repeatedly have the ring tempt you, yeah. which I don't know if that's good enough. Like, you're not going to build a ring tempt no, of course deck. not. I mean, there's a there's an end point to it. Unlike dungeons or the initiative, you can't loop back through it over and over. Yeah. And one upside is it can't be taken from you. So there's no downside to introducing the ring, unlike the monarchy or the initiative, which mm -hmm. can end up biting you after. Yeah, it's... um, It's okay. <laughs> And that's good. That's okay. That's, yeah. That's, yeah, I think that's... And that, not to get ahead of ourselves, that might be a defining feature of this set. Of like, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. And you know what? Hell yeah. yeah. Good guy Boromir, yeah. definitely not a broken card. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, shall we move on? It's time to talk about Flowering of the White Tree. White, white. Two white pips for a legendary enchantment with legendary creatures you control get plus two, plus one, and have ward one. And non-legendary creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Hey, it's a legendary super good honor of the pure. Um, you can have more than one in play, but we don't care too much about that in this format. And... I don't know. I can't remember the last time I saw a white deck that was playing anthems. <laughs> but this one's great. I've like, got great I've, anthem. I've got good news for you. I'm listening. Uh, Canadian Highlander Yellow Jacket 2022 Year End Champion Jack Hanica, D and T Pilot, moved into tokens. Recently? Yeah, he just likes an honor of the pure. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know if he's honor. He was playing honor of the pure recently. He's been known to slam the honor of the pure and was yeah. like, "This card's good." It's not an everyday card. No. This might be an everyday yeah. card. Yeah. <laughs> this is sort of like if Honor of the Pure was the Great Henge. Yeah. Right? Like, it's it's Honor of the Pure cranked up. It's got that juice. Yeah. Jesus. I want to talk about the significance of the Ward 1 on Legendary Creatures, because we always talk about Caracas, and we this do. this costs two mana all of a sudden, right? Mm -hmm. it's pretty spicy. I don't like always get... meaning, of course, you tap the Caracas and yeah. pay the other tax. Just Very you know. relevant. Against yeah. Caracas, you're so used to being so free. Yeah. Yeah, I don't always uh, honor of the pure, but when I do, <laughs> my legendary creatures get better. Hell yeah. All right. I don't know how we work this out that I got Forge Anew, and mm -hmm. I'm also not quite as medium on the set as Wheeler, but I'm excited to talk to you about Forge Anew. Three man enchantment, two and a white, ancient tomb. When it enters the battlefield, return target equipment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. As long as it's your turn, you may activate equipment abilities any time you could cast an instant, and you may pay zero rather than pay the equip cost, the first equip ability you activate during each of your turns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is awesome. I've always wanted to play Lane and Shikari, and it's bad, and you have to cut it. You make that face, but you know I'm right. Are you playing Lane and Shikari in 2023? Yeah. Oh, Lane and Shikari. If it As, was Enchantress's presence, so yeah. if you don't know Lane and Shikari, two mana, two two creature. You may pay equip abilities basically any time you could do an instant. You can basically move it around, and it synergizes for if you have swords protecting it, if you have lightning greaves protecting it, if you just want to kill people out of nowhere. It opens up a lot of really cool lines. Forge and you does that, and it also stays alive. It doesn't let you carry it. I also love this specifically in red-white equipment, because red gives you a lot of abilities to discard your hand through Faithless Looting, through um, Goblin Welder effects to put equipment into your graveyard and bring it back. And yeah, that free equip opens up stuff like Cauldre Complete, Colossal Great Hammer, all kinds of weird shenanigans. This does all of the stuff you want in your broken equipment decks, in one card and you can find it off of enlightened tutor which you're probably running anyways this might easily slam dunk be my favorite card in the set yeah as the premier equipment pilot of the format it is my favorite card of the set i'm I sorry think. who won the showdown when i was running equipment i think i did no <laughs> nice try pretty sure red white equipment We'll check the tapes. On rate, this seems to be the most powerful card we've seen so far, certainly, <laughs> among the first three cards of the set. But honestly, of the first week of spoilers, I think this one seems to be the sort of most nutty. I mean, it's niche. That's the thing. Yes. And I'm going to save us from the YouTube comments where they're like, well, Leon and Shikari, you can activate on your opponent's turn so you can move the lightning greaves sure. and protect them. Well, we're a deck with equipment and we're attacking. And that's when it's the most important Yeah, is doing that. Yeah, very fair. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Frodo, Sauron's Bane, one white for a 1-2 legendary creature, halfling citizen. 
Two hybrid Orzhov mana. If Frodo is a citizen, it becomes a halfling scout with base power and toughness 2-3 and lifelink. And then triple black. If Frodo is a scout, it becomes a halfling rogue with whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game if the ring has tempted you four or more times this game. Otherwise, the ring tempts you. Hey, out of all the Figure of Destiny variants, we've got Figure of Destiny, Warden of the First Tree, uh, we have Ascendant Spirit, and we have Evolved Sleeper. Two of those cards see play. Yeah. <laughs> figure of Destiny and Evolved Sleeper. Two of those cards, have to you have to commit two mana to leveling them up to the first stage, Ascendant Spirit and Warden of the First Tree. Mm. Are you noticing a trend here? I just think it's incredible that the most recent and like, you know, universe only universes beyond figure of destiny is a halfling. And also like, you know, figure of destiny, like the Kithkin are sort of like the original (laughs) halflings from magic. So it's just kind of awesome that they gave, like it's a huge flavor when they made Frodo into a figure of destiny. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, (laughs) quality wise on this card, it's, it's a big, maybe (laughs) it's a kind of card where people are going to want to play it. Because it's a figure of destiny, and it's Frodo. I don't recommend playing this card if you enjoy winning matches of Magic. <laughs> the mana requirement for this is just too steep. Very. And yeah. the quadruple black. Jesus. Well, the top end isn't even as powerful as figure. It's harder. It's more hoops to go through because figure was hybrid mana on every level, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it doesn't win as hard like it doesn't even get a power boost it doesn't turn into a 4-4 or anything yeah i mean evasion yeah Yeah, the fact that the ring tempts you and that the first stage of the ring is just the keyword skulk means that you want to have your creature with lower power like a lower power um so it's like we buff him up and then we make him slightly (laughs) evasive but he's still just like easy to block yeah um yeah, very it, odd. It's a flavor win for the rest of the set. They just need, like, so, somebody else has to tempt the ring onto Frodo first, and then you're golden. You can spend three mm-hmm. black and start getting in every turn and win the game. So it's, like, it's very cute. But, yeah, y- you know, if you want to spend three mana for a 2-3 lifelink, it, it, we, we, <laughs> let me show you some Highlander decks. There's does, some better things you can do for three mana. It does kind of read, hey, when you've won the game, if this deals <laughs> combat damage to a player, you win the game. <laughs> Which is very Wait, funny. I just remember that's my favorite type, <laughs> <laughs> type of card. We had everything I said. I'm in, I'm in. We're in. <laughs> We're in. Orzhov Beatdown. <laughs> All right. What's up next? We've got Reprieve. Oh, yes. I'm actually very excited about this card. Um, it's still probably not quite as good as that crazy lane in Shikari, but one and a white instant. Return target spell to its owner's hand. Draw a card. They put Remand in white, <laughs> except it's kind of better. Because it doesn't say counter, yeah. yeah. So things that are uncounterable still just get put back in hand. Nice thrun, idiot. Yeah, this is like it's wild. Actually, absurd. Yeah, yeah. Reman is not an okay magic. No, card. no. <laughs> it really isn't. Like, like people. I feel like younger players they think of Reman. They think it's like, oh, it's just a boomer card for like mm. modern, right? Like, and and whatever. But like, Reman is not an okay magic card in a format like Canlander. It's so. I, this why this exists. Yeah. <laughs> what? I yeah. think an important line of play for the non-boomer players as well is to recognize that you can protect your own spells with this as well. If you're in a counter magic, sure. in a counter matchup, and your opponent goes to counter your spell, you can return your own spell to your hand, draw a card, and counter their counter. Mm. Like this opens up so many lines of play. It's kind mm-hmm. of absurd. Yeah, you can like rebuy your on cast effects unless it's from Emrakul the Aeon's Torn because she has protection from instance. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can pump up your storm if you need to. That's a thing that happened regularly in the remand running modern Pyromancer Ascension deck I played like a million years ago. I know, uh, but yeah, this is this is already a proven card. The fact that it's in white is ludicrous. Um, I honestly think that this is maybe the most important card of the set just for kind of steering the future of the color pie like this is just a very important moment it'll likely see the most play out of any card oh yeah yeah i think so yeah yeah all right next up we have san wise the stout hearted sorry that was a lot of hard syllables to navigate through uh two mana two one legendary creature halfling peasant for one and a white has flash when it enters the battlefield choose up to one target permanent 
card in your graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. Return it to your hand, then the ring tempts you. So it does an interesting... Oh, man. What was that three-mana revolt card? For? Yeah, Renegade Rallier. Renegade Rallier. It does sort of a similar Renegade Rallier. Renegade Rallier, of course, put it into the battlefield. So it... I think this is the type of card that a lot of people are going to misplay because you're going to maybe end up holding on to it too long and try and get too much value out of it and miss it. It's a flash threat. It's a flash blocker. That's great. That's strong by itself. It has legendary. It's actually going to synergize with your own Krakus to bring it back to your hand sometimes if you want to get more value. Even if it's early, you can play it off a of fetch land and give yourself an additional land draw at the beginning. It'll protect after removal spell. Like this is very flexible and probably doubles as something like a permanent regrowth in a DNT list or like a white aggressive list and possibly even has higher synergies just because return a permanent is pretty strong. The timing is a little bit awkward. It's not as flexible as sort of a regrowth, but um, I'm a high on this card just because it has a lot of powerful words, but it's hard to figure out when the right time to play it will be. Ooh, may I recommend... Ooh, hands from both. May I recommend a Caracas yeah. and a Black Lotus. Mm. Oh, you're going you're going combo. I don't play enough Lotus to see those lines immediately. And both of you are like Nobody plays enough Lotus. Hold, both of you are like, hold on. Okay. It's a really good card. Yeah. All right. Suddenly, yeah, that's that's absolutely cracked. Yeah. I mean, I I'm taking a much more reasonable line with this card. <laughs> sure. I think it's closer to don't get upset at me. Are you gonna say Safi's Eric Sutter? No, I okay. think it's closer to Snapcaster Mage than anything else. Really? Sure. Yeah, in the sense that like Grindy value. It's matches. yeah, you're just yeah. like casting it. It's trading with something. You're getting some immediate value out of it, um, and then you're able to start beating down planeswalkers or taking back the initiative or doing whatever you want to do. And then the ring tempting you. This card will be in play. Then the ring tempts you. So like. It plays into more. It plays very well into a format where every deck is more board based than it was five years ago. Right. You know, and we're like, kind of living in that world with the initiative. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah. You're putting it on par with Snapcaster. No, no, no. Okay. It's closer to <laughs> Snapcaster Mage than, regrow, than I think it is to Renegade Rallyer. Oh, sure. In the sense, yeah. yeah. Um, or like, bomber man, like I was comparing it to Oriox Salvagers. Yeah, right? yeah. Like instead of instead of infinite mana, you're only getting infinite storm with it because it's so expensive. It, <laughs> I'm playing yeah, this card, like Serge said, returning a f uh, fetch land, and um, you know, happy with that. Yeah, I just and sometimes gotta... you cast it for no value because it has flash, and you can yeah, catch some, your opponent. It's just an ambush attention. viper. Yeah. you know. I'm sorry, my example doesn't even do infinite storm on its own. I need to be able to sacrifice my Karak. Yeah, and get that but back no. somehow, but. You know, I mean, that's I still, where my brain is going. But no, you think of Lotus, like not even Lotus Loop, but just, you know, yeah, right. I've now Lotus got value. Yeah. eight mana or something yeah, it's, stupid. I mean, right? it, do, it does do kind of like a Lurus with Lotus yeah. sort of thing. Lurus with Lotus is hard. very nice as well. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next up Westfold Rider. One and a white for a 3 1 human knight. Sacrifice Westfold Rider. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Activate only as a sorcery. Kids these days, they get a Cathar. So spoiled. They get one Cathar Commando, and now all of a sudden they're too good to play redundant Bosleys. Uh, Kasali Pride Mage. You're, uh, Wait, we're so spoiled for Bosleys these we, days too. Bosley, you're not even thinking like Ronin Unicorn here or anything. Yeah, oh, that's right. That yeah. Back in my day, yeah, we didn't get to blow up an artifact for this one. You just yeah. sacrificed the creature. I've won more yeah. Highlanders on Monday with Kami of Ancient Law <laughs> than some of you. No, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> my lawn. <laughs> but this card does draw a lot of comparisons to Cathar Commando, uh, which is one in a white, three one flash. Uh, pay one generic sacrifice, destroy an artifact or enchantment, and it's also a human soldier. So that's a rel more relevant creature type, flash, and you can uh, blow up something on your opponent's turn as well, which is pretty helpful in a way against cards like GTA, but that's also the classic way that you get goozled is you're like, oh wait till they commit the mana. Yeah. Then I'll kill the GTA. <laughs> and then they're just like, oh stifle. And you're like, oh no. I can't believe I fell for it. They Again. let me I can't believe they let me untap with this. Yeah. Did you just say that soldiers are more relevant creature type than knight? Yeah. Are you, I was gonna let him finish. Have you, have you lost the faith? <laughs> what knight tribal is legitimately the worst counter deck I think I've played in these hallowed halls of our 
of our studio. I was so sure you were going to bring but, it back. But now they're getting Westfold Rider. <laughs> I mean, it, we are getting a creature That's that only- I can cast without having fetid heath in play. So that... <laughs> But but yeah, redundancy in this in these kind of effects pretty good. And three power like Lorin of the third path card that we got recently, the three mana two one ETB uh, blow up artifact enchantment vigilance, and then you can do some shenanigans with yep. tapping and drawing cards. But that's three mana. It's and also like an ETB though, it is, and it's an yeah, ETB. But, yeah, yeah, but yeah. still, you cut your true. threes for twos, you cut your twos for ones, and you keep as many ones as possible. You know, just get aggressive mm. with these decks. All right, so we got to the end of white, and you're still saying the set's underpowered because I liked white so far. We got this is the white has the strongest cards yeah. out of yeah. the set. We are about to get We're into like halfway through the set. <laughs> there are just, more just... white cards than there are blue and green cards combined. People complained about Oko and Uro too much. This is an overcorrection. <laughs> All right, well blue let's blue, yeah. Move, yeah. Let's let's still try to find some way to celebrate with a birthday escape. <laughs> It's one blue for a sorcery. Draw a card. The ring tempts you. Okay, oh, wow. Maybe you're right, Wheeler. All right, maybe wow. the bar what? is pretty low. I don't know. I kind of like this. The ring tempts you versus scry one. It's a sorcery. Uh, I don't hate this card. Uh, any, any, like, yeah. You had me at one blue draw a card. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. What, how bad could it be? It doesn't say you lose life or anything after that. or any, So like, if, it's fine, you know. If I may, yeah, go for it. as somebody that compiled this document and put this card in here and then stood there staring at it going like, <laughs> Oh crap! I thought about, <laughs> I thought about maybe cutting this too, but I was like, I think the same thing as you. You're like, so, you know. Well, the thing is, is that the ring tempts you again. Like we said, is better if you can do it repeatedly. And while this isn't a card that you can that will naturally uh, tempt you multiple times, it is a card that falls into a category: cheap cantrips yep. that are relatively easy to justify including, and decks that play cheap cantrips usually play a series of cards that let you replay cheap cantrips. You know, Snapcaster Mage, Dread Horde Arcanist, uh, Jace Vrinz Prodigy even, yeah. Kess, like a bunch of cards that will let you at least get to stage two with this, potentially. And that's really all you need, because stage two, remember, is on attack, you loot. And what magic player doesn't like looting yeah. on attacks? That's, yeah. Oh, I mean, to add to that further, um, b- Mono Blue Flying Men blue white tempo yes. like spells that or decks that like um a lot of instants and sorceries in the graveyard that want to b- churn through their deck often play low power cheap threats mm-hmm. which works great with the first page or the first step or whatever of the ring tempts you which is skulk right that yep. larger creatures can't block it you give uh, a one one flyer with gta this mm-hmm. and suddenly it's uh it's quite happy yeah yeah it's low cost it draws a card. It draws a card. It, and it costs one mana. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to play it. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we have Stern Scolding. I just, oh, sorry. We have Stern Scolding. This is a one mana instant. <laughs> sorry. I just love the only blue cards that we're talking about. Both cost a single mana. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Two spells, two blue. Anyways, <laughs> counter target creature spell with power or toughness to or less now i'm gonna be honest originally i wanted to cut this card because i felt it was very very narrow and nelly pointed out that it's power or toughness two or less and the number of creatures that that actually hits in our format because we're so fast because we're so low to the ground we're so aggressive especially in the early games we want to have one mana this is huge vendelian clique one toughness idiot bird (laughs) <laughs> all of them power oh, and toughness on that Snapcast that we're talking about a lot of these early threats where you want that cheap disruption and even late game like live targets aren't that bad so if you're the type of deck that wants to be that wants to fight in the early game and you're worried about the early threats or even mid game threats not bad probably not your you know the first couple counter spells you're going to play but uh, I don't hate this there are a lot of things at counters that you're like oh my god nice palace jailer idiot yeah. Cool, that cool solitude. Mind. Nice Lurus. Yeah. 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 So a lot of the initiative creatures, genuinely. Well, not the not the like not all best the ones, ones. Yeah. but yeah. the ones in like initiative, like four color initiative dot deck where they're playing all of them. Four mana, one four flying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Getcha. Nice passageway oh. seer. Whoosh. <laughs> Um, but then they're also it's like, oh, it doesn't count or fury. No. Endurance. No. Tarmogoyf. Yeah, you are going to die with this in hand, and that's going to feel bad. But I think if you're the type of player playing Stern Scolding, you take those L's. 
Yeah, like right? it, it doesn't <laughs> counter questing beasts, but it does counter scavenging you. Yeah, I don't know. It's got enough good going for it. It's for one mana. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It's one mana. All right. Well, see <laughs> see you later, Blue. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> we had a good run. Yeah. Uh, Easterling Vanguard. One in a black for a 2-1. It's a human warrior. When Easterling Vanguard dies, a mass orcs one. If you don't want to remember what a mass is, it's a returning mechanic originally from War of the Spark. In War of the Spark, it was a mass... Just no, a it mass. was just a mass, yes, but they've eroded. changed. But it's been eroded yeah. to a mass zombies n. Um, basically, you put a one one counter on an army you control. It's also an orc. If you don't control an army, create a zero zero black orc army creature token first. This is the last time you'll hear us talk about a mass. <laughs> Maybe actually no. There's a couple no, of yeah, gold. There's, there are gold cards. Yeah, there's yeah, at least yeah. one more card. Oh, I don't right. want to talk about. Yeah. There's a card that's so messed up with a mass that I don't even yeah, think about. Yeah, a mass. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is your weekly reminder. Weekly, uh, aristocrats players. Let's talk. When you're playing your small baby creatures to send to the slaughter, you typically want to trade up or a cross. So cards like Blister Pod or Nested Shambler, they're one mana one ones that when they die, you replace them. Get like a and you even get like something, yeah. a bonus, like the new token has life link, or the token can sack itself for mana, or you get more tokens based on its power, unless Surge kills it with a minus activation from Umezawa's GT. Um, <laughs> don't, and, and then the whole comment section is talking about it. And that's it. Even though it's such a sick match that went on for like an hour. Yeah. Watch North 100 Showdown. Um <laughs> I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter at all. It will never be forgiven. (laughs) And so while this is a card that like in multiples or with a lot of a mass or some amount, it could theoretically create a token that is of comparable size because it doesn't. I'm out. It's no Brindle Shoat. Mm. Brindle Shoat being a two mana one, one that when it dies, you make a three, three. That's what I want. I'll even settle for like the two mana two, one that when it dies, you make a one, one, uh, spawn token or scion? What's the BF one? ones? Uh, which color? Carrier so? thrall. The ones that let you sacrifice. That's a two mana. It's a, it's a two yeah. one for two that drops a one one. I just can't remember if they're called spawns or if spawn uh, spawns are the o one scions are the one. Scions are the one one. Yeah, yeah. it's a scion because it's a little yeah. one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Play mo- you play all the one ones, the one mana creatures that do this. Then you get a couple of the two mana ones, but the ones that you get, you should find the cards that upgrade when they die, not downgrade. All right. I just think it was important to, to point out one more Doom Traveler style card in case you're trying to build your Aristocrats list with fewer colors. I will throw a bone to that. I do like pitching that Aristocrats can be more than... like. There's four, a lot of builds. Four yeah. color no blue is the best, and I don't think there's any question about that. Sure. But that's against like an open audience. If you want a metagame, or even if you just don't... I mean, who wants to spend money on a taiga? Yeah. But, uh, you know, you could shave a couple of colors or even go for sub themes and play human. Like, human aristocrats is a thing. That was a thing in standard. It could be a thing in Canland. All right. Moving on. Up next, we've got Garum, patient plotter. A 2 1 uh, for, for, sorry, a 3 1 for 2 mana, 1 and a black for a legendary creature, Halfling Horror. When Gollum, patient plotter, leaves the battlefield, the ring tempts you. And black, sacrifice a creature, colon, return Gollum from your graveyard to your hand, activate only as a sorcery. And it's a 3 1. Oh, I got to talk about a recurring 3 1 creature. Um, this one's interesting. So I hate when you have to pay mana and it doesn't go back to the battlefield. I'm spoiled, obviously, by cards like Bloodgast. Um, But because this one, the ring tempts you every time you're losing your golem? Yeah, I'm going to try it. I'll put it in Mono Black Aggro. The bar is pretty low. (laughs) (laughs) Let's be honest. I love sacrificing my own creatures. I like returning my three ones from the graveyard. I do absolutely love that for that deck. You're like, man, this barely makes the cut, but God, it's an upgrade. (laughs) Hey, dude, cards can't get any worse. (laughs) What do you mean? I don't even lose life when I play it? Oh, boy. (laughs) Where's the downside? (laughs) Uh, yeah uh golem 10 out of 10 no notes <laughs> yeah and hey bounce it with krakas huh your own krakas it's leaves play not die yeah you can set yourself up to just spend three <laughs> mana and get the ring to tempt you a whole bunch it's yeah 
All right. Uh, next up, we've got Gore Bag. I can't. Uh, gore Bag of Minas Morgul. I apologize. How are you feeling about that? Yeah. All right. That's, that's fine. Yeah, I wouldn't no, have done that, any different. That was pretty good. That was All right. Pretty good. Two mana, two two legendary orc soldier for one in a black. Whenever a goblin or orc you control deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice it. When you do, draw a card or create a treasure token. Now, the only downside to this card is it's not a goblin itself, but I can see red-black goblin players being very happy to include this as sort of an engine card. Um, it doesn't happen often, but sometimes the goblin players can run out of steam, either on the mana side to explode and dump their hand as quickly as possible, or on the you don't have enough cards, or... Um, draw off your recruiter stack or something like that so being able to turn any of your cheap goblin like your one ones or goblin tokens or even a tutor that came into play and it's time to upgrade into anything else is nothing but upside i can't believe this isn't templated to be like whenever one or more goblins or orcs you can sack one of them to draw like the fact that you can hit them with five goblins sack them all draw five cards yep that's that makes up for it not being a goblin i think I'm a little disappointed that it's only a 2-2 two -two for 2 on raid, but... You just talked about a 3-1. <laughs> <three> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But my cards have a different bar. I don't know, man. <laughs> this card doesn't die when my opponent has a Boreal <laughs> Druid. Oh, my God. Jeez. Jesus. Another great creature that you can counter with Stern Scolding. Oh, that's and true. Yeah. All right, let's move on, Wheeler. All right. Mirkwood Bats, a.k.a. How to Scare a Commander Player. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So, continue, I'm sorry. No, 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 it's fine. We could slag on them. I'm on the CAG. They can't do anything. <laughs> uh, three and a black for a 2-3 bat. Flying. Whenever you create or sacrifice a token, each opponent loses one life. So, all joking aside, this is kind of a scary card, but it is four mana, dies to lightning bolt. Every commander player is sweating. This is yeah. the most busted card anyone's ever seen. And the Canadian Highlander players are like, is this worth talking about? <laughs> right? And you all kind of know it, yeah. right? We don't have an issue with Dockside Extortionist. No, we're not a Brass's Bounty format. <laughs> or yeah. telling somebody like, no, your treasure deck is way too good. <laughs> uh, you know, please stop. It uh, It is a scary ability that can come out of nowhere. And I think that there is a world world where um, cards that generate tokens, doesn't matter what kind of tokens, uh, is worth exploring. Like they were getting enough pieces, enough generalized uh, like lines of text across cards that just say like, if a token is created, make this instead. Um, but this one is just a lot of the good ones that show up are like, hey, this could go into this like four color food token treasure, like artifacty kind of deck. Um, they're all three drops. Right. And this is a four drop. Yeah. So I'm out. I have, every time a set comes out and something like this is printed, I keep talking about old Rutstein.deck. Every single time. I, the, the treasure food, we have um, tireless tracker, tireless provisioner, fey offering, whatever that automaton is that like you make. Academy manufacturer. Academy manufacturer. As you said, though, every single one of those is a three drop, yeah. which yeah. is which is not great, but... I want to make it. And you ended up going in the uh, goblin tinkerer direction of like looping stuff. And it's like kind of eggs related and it kills you dead. Mm -hmm. And I know, yeah, that like these kind of effects kind of inspired you and took you to another direction. I keep hoping and dreaming and someday I need to sit down and actually brew this deck. Yeah. I mean, I your point spread can be triple mox Tolarian Academy. And I don't think you need to go into the welders. You just need to like make as many card structs as possible. Yes. And yeah. just play all these permanents to make your card and your nettle cyst huge. But that's a problem, right? Because you're going to play Urza. <clears throat> and yeah. if you're going to play a four drop that makes and interacts with tokens and artifacts, why would you play Mirkwood Bats unless you're going for a combo kill? I think, yeah, if Mirkwood Bats ends up being another kind of Oriox Salvagers where it's like, okay, congrats, you, you have a combo if you put all the pieces together. The problem is it's a card fine. where like the where you the cards you side this with to make your combo is like oh my god you should see the loops i have with this card in Kark clan ironworks <laughs> just like not an okay magic card yeah no i'm a little worried that if it if there is a like solid infinite combo that's like three or less cards that involves this card as as the finisher or whatever it's like 
the cards that build up to that could just win you the game on their own yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, so is this... it might end up being just kind of a weird win more card to Canadian yeah. Islander. Isn't what was that old saying Jeremy White had? You don't need to include bad cards to make your good cards better. That doesn't sound like a Jeremy quote. He plays plenty of bad cards. <laughs> oh. Well, somebody coined that phrase. He's not even in the room. Yeah, what's he going to do? Fight me in a match of magic to defend himself? <laughs> he sold those the cards. The gauntlet's hey, been hey. thrown down. <laughs> yeah, he sold those cards talk, to go play Frisbee. Talk about this good card, Nelson. Yeah. I'm all right, we're done with the bats. Right, it's right, time to talk go. about Orcish Bowmasters. Sorry, me, sorry, Coach. Sorry, me, Jeremy. There we go. One in a black for a 1-1 one, one Orc Archer with Flash. Whenever Orc Bowmasters enters the battlefield and whenever an opponent draws their first card, except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps... Sorry, I'm so excited about this card. Comma, Orcish Bowmasters deals one damage to any target. Then a mass works one. So this card's kind of messed up and does a mass. <laughs> Back up for a second. Yeah. Any target. Any target. It's a Bowmaster. It can shoot their creatures. It can shoot their Planeswalkers. It can shoot someone in another game over. Just kidding. <laughs> but but yeah, so you can respond to someone casting their card draw spell Uh any time it could be your turn or their turn if they're doing anything to draw a card ever other than their draw step you can flash this in and then you get two bodies for two mana and you also get to ping something and that's the minimum you get off of this well you get to ping it what any target i know but it's not even like it's for each card so, like, if you play this, play this in response to a Seer of Visions, you can kill a 2-2 two, two, or two one ones. Like, they're multi, it's whatever they draw a card, except, except the for the first, first or when it ETBs. So, they Seer, if right. they have two Elves and they Seer of Visions, comes into play, ETB <laughs> trigger, kill one of them, the Seer of Visions, trigger. kill the other one. <laughs> or if they have a 2-2, two, two, you can kill, like, it's yeah. it's even better. And you, and you just <laughs> made a 2-2 two, two next to your 1-1 one, yeah. one as well. Yeah. I didn't even realize it was an ETB trigger in addition yeah. to the draw. Yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I got so fixated on the back half. Oh you just my get God. to pull them and make a four four for two mana when they oh, when they get ancestral recall. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's wild. Yeah. Or brainstorm. Sorry, I just want everyone to know. <laughs> no, I didn't understand the templating on this card when I read it, and I thought it was just whenever they draw either. one or more cards, and it was still very hyped for this card. For, for some context, I'd like to pose a question to you too. Yeah. All sure. right. Outside of Dark Confidant. And maybe Dothy Voidwalker. Think of black two drops that can go into control decks, mid range decks, and aggro, just like everywhere. Like, what is a black two drop that has kind of a similar ish quality of stuff like Ledger Shredder, Snapcaster Mage, or Dreadhorde Darkness, Young Pyromancer, <laughs> Tarmogoyf Scoos, Stoneforge? Like, it, it, I actually it, like Jadar. Jadar comes to mind because I do put him in, in aggro and mid range decks. This guy got. Turned up by a three one. So. <laughs> I have a question I for both of you, yeah. but Nelson, your answer doesn't count. I think I think <laughs> where Wheeler's going with this is it doesn't exist. Sure, it, not really. Yeah, and even Bob is just like a card where control decks in our format, like a black, like a three color black X control deck, isn't playing Bob anymore. No. It's a mid range card, yeah. right? Or a very aggressive. Deck. This thing is just yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, Jesus yeah, Christ. Aggro deck yeah, aggro deck wants to play it. Control deck would be happy to play this in the mirror, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. tempo decks want to play this because it's a cheap flash threat. And yeah, it's... <laughs> you can cast it off Luris. You can... I mean, it's just like... I'm just like dreaming of Colgon's commanding yeah. this card back to my hand yeah. after they've killed it. And play. The only downside? Bad creature types. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. That's true. Oh, if this card's so good, it makes playing symmetrical draw better. <laughs> like uh, like a words of like wisdom, a, or a, <laughs> uh, vision scheme, vision yeah. scheme, <laughs> yeah, or Pro just howling mine. I, I don't think you ever want to give your opponents cards. I I think there is a what bug. If they're playing land or else with those cards. <laughs> I think there's a bug or like a four color no white deck out there that plays. You know, Shieldred, Narset, Leovold, Lauren. all these cards. <laughs> well, all these cards that oh, just yeah. say like. Hey, if you would Hull Breacher, oh, if right, you would draw, yeah. haha, ha, idiot. Or if you oh would draw, God. take damage. Yeah, sure. no, you put this in the 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 Wheel of Theft deck. Yeah, you just play this yeah. in Time Twister. Yeah, you Time Twister. And first, if you yeah. don't have a Notion Thief, you just have this instead. You yeah. just dome oh them for God. seven and make a seven. It's seven. just kind of wild that they, <laughs> they took Underworld Dreams, made it better, and also a two-drop creature that <laughs> yeah. can just like... Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh my god. Nice baleful Strix idiot. Kill your bird. Make a 2-2 two, two, kill you. You I know saw... what's weird? This card's so good, it's still not as important as Remand and White. Go I was gonna search. say, yeah, it was... Yeah. I don't know, guys. But this card's I sweet. This card's some, sweet. Got, I guess we have a couple cards at the high bar all of a sudden. Yeah. But let's move on to red now. Uh, the first one we have here is the Ember Flamesmith. Sorry, the text. Erebor Flamesmith. Erebor Flamesmith. Pardon me in my bad eyesight. Two mana, two one dwarf artificer for one in red. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, deal one damage to each opponent. Not bad. It's straightforward. You probably want to play it in the spells deck. I don't know how many people are playing, uh, what was it, Goblin Electromancer? No, that was the one that discounted the spells. What was the three mana? Gutter two, snipe. Two? Gutter snipe. But gutter they've, snipe. they've given us a two mana, two one gutter snipe for only one damage already from Amon Cat. We or, Firebrand Archer, yeah, Firebrand, and yeah. we have Kessig Flame Breather okay. from yeah. uh, Eldritch Moon or Crimson. No, not Eldritch. Crimson Vow or Midnight. Yeah. I mean, then I guess the upside to that is we also have density. If this yeah. is what you want your deck yeah. to do, have fun with it. It goes to Mono Red Burn, yeah. right? That's where they play it usually. Yeah, Burn Burn. Burn, not, burn, not, not RDW burn. No, this, this is one of these cards Committed that we're burn. like, yeah. now you know what exists. Have our blessing and let's move on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> letting yeah. you know that this is like, God, I really don't want to just like slag on you this entire. Episode. Oh yeah, great. This isn't the like 2010 Nelson Gelectrode <laughs> kind of deck. This is it's no, like it's a, just, just goes and burn. It's fine. The yeah. raid is okay. Yeah, this deck it exists and it's it's scary. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah, Greg's killed me with the Firebrand Archers more than yeah. once. Yeah. <clears throat> Improvised club. One in a red. It's an instant as an additional cost to cast a spell. Sack an artifact or a creature. Improvised club deals four damage to any target. Uh, so this is heart fire from War of the Spark. But I believe you, this can, I mean, this can sack an artifact, which is a nice little add on. You can get rid of your mox ruby to shoot a thing. Uh, underrated card style is the reckless abandoned yeah. collateral damage style, like sack a thing, deal a massive amount of damage. And coincidentally, it goes into the same deck as the Erebor Flamesmith. It's just the like, I'm actual burn. I'm going to target you instead of playing Tattermunge Maniac or whatever <laughs> garbage one drop I refuse to cut from my list. <laughs> Uh, and I want big points of like to the dome because with one of the pingers that we mentioned, two mana deal five. That's shrapnel blast, baby. Yeah, yep. that's pretty good. It's very specific where this shows up, but again, this is the like, hey, just checking in. These cards exist. Reckless abandon only costs one mana, so maybe you want to look into that. But you know, redundancy is important. This is an instant too. Yeah. Oh, sorry, abandons a sorcery, right? Yeah, reckless abandons yeah. a sorcery. And I remember uh, a long time ago, before we had as many incinerates as we do now, or volcanic hammers. Those were more common. Oh yeah, you they were staples. The, the reckless abandon sure. were in most of the red deck wins list. Yeah, I played shrapnel blast in like red versions of the artifact decks for mm -hmm. aggro, the finisher stuff yeah. like that. I don't hate it. These cards are okay. Let's talk about Moria Marauder. It's red, red. Two red pips for a goblin warrior with double strike. Whenever a goblin or orc you control deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn, and it's a 1-1. One, one. Wow. So another different Warren Instigator. This one's maybe better than Warren Instigator. No, I guess it doesn't make mana. Draws cards instead, but like, I mean... So maybe the Born Instigator comparison isn't fair. This is more like another one of that... What's his name again? Grenzo. Gorebag. <laughs> Gore oh. Right, because it like draws cards. Of Venus Morgul? Of Venus Morgul. That's <laughs> oh, right. Oh, okay. I know, Gorebag. Okay, yeah, Gorebag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gorebag. Anyways, I mean, a two mana 1-1 one, one goblin with double strike. I'm already in. Like, yeah. you know, goblin role player. Uh... Has an effect as soon as it hits the battlefield, assuming you're attacking with other goblins that turn. Wait, it's any, it's any goblin. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what makes this so same as the con yeah. con The same as the template. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I didn't was like, know that. I was, <laughs> I, was, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was like, why are you two so low on this? This No, it's it, fine. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not low. Yeah. As the premier goblins pilot in the room. Um, I'll give you, I'll concede that one. Yeah, yeah that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. Whenever a goblin. Yeah. Or an orc. Okay, Thanks. gore bag. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe the goblins, maybe the Jun goblins or Black Red Goblin deck are going to play Bowmasters now because it's so good, and it's an orc, and this cares about it. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sure. Bowmasters is pretty good. Sure. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, Moria Marauder, 
pretty solid goblin include. Yes. Not yeah. sure if it goes in any other decks. Probably. I not. mean, Naya Double Strike? Warrior Tribal. Warrior Tribal? No. I no, no. <laughs> I might no, put I... it in Naya Double Strike because it just draws cards when it hits them. That's true. That's, That's fair. Pretty, that's pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, all right. All right. Okay. Moving on, we have the Ranger's Fire Brand. This is one mana sorcery, deals two damage to any target, and the ring tempts you. I, this is sort of similar to um, Birthday <laughs> Escape that we are talking about before. It's an effect that is redundant. Damage is good. Any target is good. The ring tempts you. You can play it with Snapcaster again. Pro you're probably not putting this in burn. You're probably putting this in decks that you can play it more than once. God, I swear, I thought you were going to say it's sort of similar to Shock. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. It's like a strictly worse Shock. Yeah. yeah. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Good like card. It. Solid. Next okay. up. Spiteful Banditry. X red red. It's an enchantment. When Spiteful Banditry enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to each creature. Whenever one or more creatures your opponent controls die, you create a treasure token. This ability triggers only once each turn. Okay. So my brain has processed that this is extremely rude and kills a lot of things. And that's good. And that it's... I mean, the Schmied Hook Massacre already does not see enough play in our format. And this isn't exactly Meat Hook, but this is a more sinister kind of Meat Hook in that Big Red could play it. Or Blue Blue Moon might even be interested in maybe giving a gander for this. It's nice that they scale. Um, Blue Moon won't play this. I mean... I, wanna, I don't want to play it in Blue Moon. No. Yeah. Blue Moon Boomers might play this. The people that are still on, like, Madcap Experiment. I mean, I love this for Big Red and, like, prison decks. Yeah. Prison decks are always looking for more things to be able to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the treasures are obviously very nice. I just... I'm worried that this isn't going to see very much play at all in our format, purely because of the damage you get on rate. Well, I mean, I know it won't, but we got to talk about some of these cards. All <laughs> oh, right, this, this card's great. Buy packs. No, no, no. <laughs> buy packs. Buy packs. It is definitely on the lower end. Yeah. Yeah, and there's no disputing that, especially the how restrictive the treasure thing is. If it was, if it was in any way not restricted once per turn or one or more creatures like that. That just makes a card that's already kind of weak feel even worse. Mm. And I can see that being balanced probably for commander yeah, in a multiplayer most, format most specifically, because that's it, that'd just be a little bit too much, but like if wrath of God just also had the text of two dark rituals on it. It's like, that's not a fair card. <laughs> Free right? wrath. Of God. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. All right, let's move on to green then. Shall we? Nelson. It's time for Delighted Halfling, and we are delighted to introduce a one green mana, one two halfling citizen that taps for a colorless. And there's more. It taps for one mana of any color, but you can only spend this mana to cast legendary spells, and that legendary spell can't be countered. We got another one drop! Hey! Got, <laughs> sorry, another one drop mana dork! Hooray! This one's among the, I want to say worst, I guess, of the mana dorks. You Did love read this? that second ability again. You, you can you can mana fix for legendary spells, and you, then they can't be countered. You know Oko's a legendary Yeah, Planeswalkers. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> what? I guess there's a lot of legendary things. This, <laughs> this, this set's really going to try to highlight that. I don't know. I... What can I say? Craterhoof Behemoth isn't legendary, and Elvish Arc Druid isn't legendary. Okay, but so, think of Plan B and Hoof. Yeah, like yeah. what are you doing well, in Hoof? If you're not hoofing? Yeah, that's like, true. Actually, you're like, playing a Planeswalker. Like yeah. worst case scenario, this is already an above average Elf Mana Dork because it's a one two, and it doesn't even hurt you for damage like yeah, some of the true. bad Elves we have to play. Yeah, and on the upside, it's a Bird of Paradise that makes the your best spells uncounterable. I do like that. How do you beat? An uncounterable Minskin boo. <laughs> right? Like, time will tell. Like, all of a sudden, your Renin six or your Oko on turn two is uncounterable? Yeah. No, it's, you, it's a big deal. Like, I'm going to lose to this card. Why? I will be on the draw, and my opponent will play this on turn one. And I am going to wish that I did anything else with my evening. <laughs> like, it's. I, okay, <laughs> maybe this is going to come up more than I'm expecting right now, but I personally am just really high on the card because it gives us more um, security with having a greater density of one-drop mana. Yeah. Experience. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the floor of this card is that it's just another mana dork, yep. which is wild. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what the second toughness is doing in there. 
just making us feel great for playing it, I guess. I would be curious in a hierarchy of where this ranks. Would you put this behind the hierarchs? Because I think I would. I, I think would. I'd put this, I'd, I'd start this in third place for best mana elf ever. And then we have to talk about death right. Death right is obviously weird because it's not always, it's got more flexibility. It's not a pure mana elf. Birds, death right, noble, ignoble, delighted halfling. That's my top five in order. Yeah. Birds above just because of nostalgia? Yeah, I just love those birds. Yeah. No, uh, because <laughs> it's for one of any color. Because it's it's uh, consistent. Yeah, I mean, sure. Death Rite is obviously a better magic card than birds. Yep. It's a better creature, but it's not as reliable considering that we only have 10. I mean, your opponent also has. And they also up have to fetch 10 lands, but you, fetch yeah, lands, but we've, we've all been in a game where your Death Rite doesn't play for mana because your opponent can play around it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sorry, where did where did this fit in your top five? Was it there or no? Uh, yeah, this is like number this five. This is number five now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like this is. That this is that good. At, this is that impactful. At point of not playing this card, I put it below the hierarchs. I think the hierarchs are. I mean, people always undervalue the exalted. Oh my god, that's why I put it in. So, like yeah. I called those one and two for me, yeah. right? Yeah, I I would agree. I would go birds, death right, hierarchs, and then for me, I'm putting like gilded goose and the dorks the tap for a green above this. But that's just imagining what I'm casting. Like you can't turn to a uh, land war tribe off this thing. Gilded Goose. Okay. Well, I mean, that makes, like no, goose? no, sorry. I do. I don't. I'm actually not super high on Gilded Goose anymore. Okay. But and I, if if your priorities are lying in consistent green mana, mm. then like yeah, this card yeah, falls. Fair. This card falls shorts on the like Circle of Dreams, Druid, Priest yeah. of Titania. Pop that's off. just where. That's just the deck I'm playing Mana Dorks in the most often these days. Yeah, but I, I see the value yeah. of like yeah. you know this and decks with tons of really exciting casting Grist off this white Jesus X yeah. <laughs> Nice blue deck, idiot. I think. <laughs> I think well, yeah, that's messed up. Actually, I don't think we're saying that you're wrong. I sure, think it's sure. just a, a different perspective yeah. of what we're hoping to accelerate off of it. So there's several different ways you can be excited about delighted <laughs> halfling, <laughs> and we hope you enjoy all of them. <laughs> all right, the last card we're going to talk about today: Peregrine Took. Took this, what? Uh, took away uh, the the rest of the card. No, <laughs> three mana, two three, legendary halfling citizen for two and a green, ancient tomb. If one or more, if one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus an additional food are created instead, and then you can sacrifice three food tokens to draw a card. This once again fits into this deck that doesn't exist yet, <laughs> right? It doesn't make food by itself. It synergizes with a lot of it, and it's starting to give you a payoff mm -hmm. for a lot of the stuff which didn't really exist yet. Um, the only cards pre prior to this that really cared about food are like mm. Rat Oven and uh, Troll King, which doesn't even say like see play in our format. But I wanted to play it in this in this food deck that I've been talking about. I mean, it, the best one, arguably one of the best payoffs for food uh, is Asmo, Asmo Antarctica Dicing to Coldcar, and you're playing that. Oh yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that card is... I mean, that one is a bit more difficult to set up, but you have blood tokens. Sure. You have rummaging and looting on your ledger shredders because you're casting cheap spells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. Um, but, yeah. I it, would not uh, play this card in, in any other deck, but it's fascinating this exists. And this is what we were talking about earlier, where the, we're starting to get this density. The, the tokens matters deck mm -hmm. is becoming increasingly real. What do I what do I have to do to make myself actually brew this someday? You have to sit down with like two hours. It's of so time. much time. Yeah. yeah. And I think the biggest trap for brewing this deck is gonna be there's a lot of bad cards. There's yeah. so many bad cards. Yeah. Like at what point have you just not just at what point have you made a deck that can actually survive goblins running you over? You know, like <laughs> that's the thing. You can make decks with really powerful synergies and just die i mean it's never stopped you before <laughs> it's never stopped any of us yeah. before i will i gotta say you're in um, good company <laughs> this is uh uh this is for you lore enthusiasts uh this card is uh not very uh pip heavy oh because uh -huh. that's pippin um <clears throat> which is nice because the, this deck is likely going to be four colors i think uh, we that's why it's so difficult yeah so pip's that, not very heavy yeah yeah, and and I mean, this set also adds a lot of food in the gold section as well, mm -hmm. which is going to further complicate it. Out of curiosity, I'm thinking it's going to be bug. 
I think it's four color, no white. Yeah, I definitely agree on no white. Red is interesting because it gives a lot of a treasure generators, but not a lot of treasure payoffs. Professional face puncher. I think treasure is its own payoff. Treasure Not to sound too poetic, payoff, but right? I think like <laughs> I think like treasure itself just lets you play more magic or lets you activate the abilities of these extra tokens you're making. That's fair. Professional face punch or another three drop. What do you do until turn three? <laughs> well, deck? we're again we're a triple Mox Tolerian Academy deck that yeah. could play honestly Mox Amber because there's so oh many of these cards God. are legends. And even like going like, you know, Magda, Psy, Master Thopterus, Old Rudiger, like there's just so many of them. And so our, our count of uh, Moxen, we could actually play Chromox and Mox Diamond yeah, I was and Mox say. Amber. Interesting. We just yeah. want these cheap artifacts anyways. Yeah. 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 Graveyard's probably going to be a resource as well. Mm -hmm. Could maybe jam some Mana Dorks since we're in green. Yeah. Yeah. You know, get the Delighted Halfling in there. I would play Gilded Goose in that deck. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely That's a would. That's yeah. Gilded Goose. In. Yeah, Oko food token suddenly being a little bit even more relevant. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that Oko needed any help. No, but yeah. Another three drop. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All right, so that's going to do it for today. And we recognize that today's set review has been a little bit different in that we're a little bit more generous with some of the cards that we included. Now, mind you, there is a lot of really cool really powerful cards in this set that we didn't talk about. And as always, we invite you in the comments down below to include some cards that you think we've missed. Now, we will be back with part two. We're going to be talking about all the cards that are in the commander decks. We're going to be talking about the gold cards, the land cards, and the artifacts. So there's still cards that we haven't reached yet, but let us know. As always, a reminder that what we do is brought to you by you, the support of the Patreon, for patreon.com slash linearity run. I've been Serge, joined by Nelson. Thanks so much. Wheeler. Uh... Huge shout out to James on tech. Hello. Hi. James is here. <laughs> and whoever's editing this, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.